Good morning, everyone. And a happy new year to each of you. Uh, we have made it to 2021 and that is a good thing. And uh, so I welcome each of you here to the Shenandoah uh, Sunday morning service streaming online. Uh, and I welcome everyone to this morning's service, whether you be here in San Antonio or in the surrounding areas or anywhere throughout the nation or the world, we uh, are thankful that you have uh, chosen to spend this time with us this morning. This morning's service will be presided over by Shirley Gaither and our speaker this morning will be Carol White. Uh, but before we begin this morning's service, we do have a couple of announcements to go over with you. First of all, this Wednesday, we'll be having our every other week online fellowship night starting at 7 o'clock p.m. All you need to do is just use the link that you use to join this morning service to join the online fellowship on Wednesday. This is a great opportunity for us to get together, to chat, to catch up, uh, and just share time together. Next Sunday will be our online potluck immediately following the morning service. Now we did this back in December and the idea is that you stay online after the morning service. You bring your food uh, to where you are sitting and uh, we share together while we eat lunch together like a potluck only uh, we don't get to share each other's food we eat our own food but we still share together uh, around a virtual table and also it's a means to assist those who have food insecurity in the san, san antonio and surrounding areas we encourage the congregation to donate the money they might have spent on going out to a restaurant on that sunday and donating that uh, to those who are in need. If you have any questions about the donations themselves, please contact Kathleen. And this month, uh, all donations will go to the Salvation Army. So please plan to join and plan to share. I also want to share with you something that we're going to do a little bit different going forward, which is in the past, we've always used potluck to share uh, within the congregation who have birthdays for a given month. And we will be sharing birthdays coming up in the following week and next week via our announcement slides. So you'll see an additional slide on each uh, week's announcements in which that slide will list who has birthdays starting on that Sunday and going through to the following Sunday, Saturday. So who has birthdays in the coming week? Uh, this week, we don't happen to have any birthdays. Uh, however, look for it in next week's Sunday morning announcements. And finally, uh, each week we uh, offer time to share prayer concerns and grateful news with the congregation. And in order to do that, uh, you just need to reach out to Carol White by end of day Thursday, either by calling her or texting her or emailing her. Uh, and if you do that, then those will be included in the announcement slide deck and will also be shared with the congregation during this time, Family of God time. And also then a prayer will be offered on behalf of the congregation over the prayer concerns that have been raised. Now this week for grateful news, we have that the Shannon family made a camping trip out to Cienito uh, with their new RV camper and they had a great time. Now I understand that they were not able to control who their uh, neighbors were. And uh, so that factored into uh, how good a time they had or didn't have, but um, uh, they had a great time out at Cienito and uh, we're grateful that they had that time to share as a family uh, and to share new surroundings uh, with their new camper. In prayer concerns this week, uh, we will be raising up Dottie for health concerns, uh, Terry G who uh, takes care of sick animals, uh, and the prayer is to ensure that she can maintain uh, the safe, a safe environment for herself. Uh, prayers for John G for health concerns. And then related to COVID, uh, we have prayers for Mark B and Mark D who have been diagnosed with COVID. 
and also prayers for Oscar's family. Oscar recently passed away uh, as a result of COVID. And Lila Gardner will be offering the prayer on behalf of the congregation for those concerns that have been raised. So at this time, I would ask that you bow your head. Loving God, we give thanks for the dawning of a new year and all the possibilities that it presents to us. We pray for restored health for the millions of people who are ill throughout the world today. We've been asked to specifically lift up some people to you today. Today we lift up our, our sister Dottie and John G who are experiencing health issues. We lift up both Mark B and Mark D who have been diagnosed with COVID. We pray that the medical staff and the caregivers who treat all those who are ill will be in tune with the needs of those that they serve. Lord, thank you for the minds that you have given some of your creation to figure out how to gain some control over the diseases that strike us. We lift up the family of Oscar, who has passed away with COVID. We pray that they will feel the comfort of your embrace at this difficult time. We also lift up Terry G, who cares for sick animals and desires to maintain a safe environment for both herself and the animals for which she cares. Lord, we pray that you will hold up all of these people close so they can feel the comfort and peace that only you can bring. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you, Lila. And at this time now, we will begin to join our morning service. Good morning. We welcome each of you today as we gather to give thanks to God for the blessings and possibilities of this new year he has blessed us with. May we open our hearts to receive his blessings and rejoice with him. Let us begin our praise with singing God of Wonder, God of Thunder from Community of Christ Sings, hymn number 18.
Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalms 147, and it is adapted from the New Revised Standard Version. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for God is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. Let us continue to praise God as we sing Breath of the Living God, hymn number 43 from Community of Christ Sings. this time I would ask that you bow your head as I offer a prayer on behalf of the congregation for the year that is before us. Our Lord, as we come before you as a congregation, we do so with a thankful heart. We thank you, Lord, for all the many blessings that you have provided for us and the ways that you have guided us in the course of this year. Lord, we pray for all of those who have been impacted by COVID this year. This has been a historic year in the life of your creation. One in which many of us have found our lives to be disrupted in ways in which we had never intended or never foresaw. But Lord, we pray for all of those who have lost loved ones during this time. May we pray that they might be comforted, that they might find you and feel your love. And as we transition from 2020 into 2021, Lord, we pray that you will continue to be with those who are in need as a result of this pandemic, that you will continue to watch over your creation and to guide us in ways in which we can take care of ourselves to the best of our ability and that we might find this pandemic begin to subside and to be overcome. And as we look at this past year for the Shenandoah congregation specifically, Lord, and the needs in the San Antonio area, we thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness which this congregation has exercised. 
We thank you for everyone who has adapted and adjusted and been willing to engage in the ministry which this congregation is offering. And we thank you for your guidance in the expanded ministry which has been provided. And as we look to this new year, Lord, as a congregation, and as we face the challenges and opportunities which lie ahead of us, we pray, Lord, that we may always see your hands in what transpires, that we may, we may always hear your voice and follow it, that we might join with you in an expanded ministry, one which we may have never foreseen and we may not truly understand. But working with you, Lord, our prayer is that this congregation might continue to minister to those who are in need in the San Antonio and in all areas. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I guess that picture about sums up 2020 for many. I certainly had better, more productive years, but oh, what blessings I have had this year in spite of the pandemic. I have not contracted either the flu or COVID-19, nor has any member of my family. While I've had some minor health issues and members of my extended family have had some more serious health issues, we are all recovered or improving with good medical care. No one in my family has lost employment and is not in serious financial distress. My grandsons and my niece are either in school, working, or both. I've not been totally confined to my home. I'm able to afford house and yard care, which offers continued employment for two families. I'm outside a lot, walking with two friends, the wonderful trails of Howard Peak Greenway. We have completed all the trails on the west side of Bear County and are starting on the east side now. We have been in each other's bubble, so to speak, for years and we're all well. Although I've been socially distanced from my immediate family, we pretty much always were because we don't live in the same city. We only got together on holidays or special events of course, those events were canceled, and we did miss summer barbecues, boat rides, day trips to various local Texas digs. But we were able to enjoy some of our regular Christmas traditions as the gathering rules loosened a little bit. But we recognize the pandemic is clearly not over. Even though we see some hope, we have no way of knowing when it will be over or when our lives will get back to some kind of normal that we once knew. We must stay vigilant and protect ourselves and others by following all the recommendations prescribed by CDC, our state, or our county or city. And thank you, thank you, Mayor Ron Nuremberg and Judge Nelson Wolf for your intelligent and diligent leadership. And thank you, Eric Cooper of the San Antonio Food Bank. Thank you volunteers for your tireless service to those who are experiencing food insecurity. And thanks to all of you who donate money to our local organizations that provide for us in our time of need. We can hardly forget this picture. In 1965, Charles Schultz, a devout Christian and creator of the Peanuts comic strip, had asked to, was asked to create a Christmas special for CBS featuring the Peanut characters. He agreed with one requirement, 
that they allow him to include the story of the birth of Jesus. Although the station executives were hesitant and tried to convince him otherwise, Schultz was insistent. And as a result, for the past 50 plus years, millions of people have watched A Charlie Brown Christmas and heard the story of Jesus spoken by the lioness character and heard lioness tell us what Christmas was all about. Charlene Spear, a Christian Life Ministry staff person, says it wasn't until a few years ago that she realized the hidden message in the film. Linus, a child who seems to have some insecurities, as he carries a security blanket with him at all times. In fact, he never drops his blanket, except at the exact moment he says the words, fear not. In this seemingly innocent moment, Linus delivers a powerful reminder of the true meaning of Christmas. We are to fear not, for Jesus is born. We need not rely on material things for security. We have God with us. Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the true meaning of Christmas. Charlene said that someone informed her, indignantly so, that Lioness picks up his blanket at the end of the speech, so her interpretation must be wrong. Well, yes, that did happen. Linus did pick up his blanket at the end of his speech. However, he drops it again later. Amid big, bright, colorful, shiny, artificial trees, Charlie Brown chose the least of these. A little wooden tree with just a few branches Shortly thereafter, Linus uses his blanket to wrap around the base of the tree and says, maybe it just needs a little love. In that moment, the tree awakens, stands tall and firm, a reminder that no matter who we are, how many mistakes we have made, a little love makes all the difference. In recent columns of our San Antonio Express newspaper, columnists have written about the pandemic. Two that particularly caught my eye were The Silver Linings of the Pandemic by Kathleen Parker that appeared on the 19th of December and In the Darkness Be a Light to Others by Gary Clack that appeared the 20th of December. Also in the December-January issue of Reader's Digest, there is a section called Family Miracles, Real Life Stories of Hope. So today you're gonna get the Reader's Digest version. There are three short stories, a mother's eerie premonition, an uncle's unusual joyride, the sweet wait for a dad's holiday treat, and the rest of the issue is full of funny cartoons, a guide on how to stay in gratitude, how to shop for bargains, and how to cure belly aches. I'm sure that it's still on the newsstands and HEB, and I recommend that you pick it up. It will bring you an extra measure of hope and joy to start our new year. But my favorite article in this issue is Finding the Silver Linings, which are testimonies of Reader's Digest readers, and I want to share a few with you. Angela Elkhart of Danielsville, Pennsylvania says, because of the quarantine measures, I no longer run as many errands and our yearly vacations were canceled. No more pit stopping at various stores. The result was a bigger wallet and fewer things. I ended up saving so much more money because I'm not spending sporadically and I'm not buying things that we don't need. If I keep this up, I'll be able to pay off my car in another year instead of three. A little closer to home is Sharon Devora of Pike Creek, Texas. She says, my yard has never looked any better than it does now. I spend part of the mornings outside every day. Kathleen Zarenko of Dayton, Florida, uh, Dayton Beach, Florida says the local craft store remained open during the lockdown and I was invited to take kits home to make masks for healthcare workers. At first, I hesitated since I don't own a sewing machine, but that did not stop me. From the middle of April until the middle of July, I made 42 masks, all sewn by hand. What a joy to do my part to support first responders. Kathy Kordsmeyer of Los Altos, California says, 
In most neighborhoods in Silicon Valley, everybody's busy and our court is no exception. In the 20 years that we've lived here, we've known our neighbors enough to wave as we drive in and out of our garages or walk the dogs. Everybody was friendly, only very busy with work and school. The quarantine began and a few of us decided to meet each afternoon in the middle of the street for the five o'clock wave. Since then, just about everybody on the courts comes out every afternoon for casual conversation. Months later, we're no longer just neighbors, but friends. We know about the children and how they're handling the loss of school. We know the neighbor who likes to bake bread. We know about the daughter who loves horses and the one who belongs to a cheer team. We've watched a baby grow into a toddler. Best of all, we know we can count on each other in this time of need. That is a comfort in this difficult time. Mindy, Mindy McKenna of Kansas City, Missouri says, my husband has been retired for a while and I retired in October, 2018. We love each other, but we're quite independent with our own interests and schedules. So when the lockdowns began, I wasn't sure what to expect. The pandemic has been heartbreaking for those who've lost loved ones or jobs. But our silver lining is that my husband and I have grown closer than ever through this time of isolation. We encourage each other when one of us begins to feel discouraged. We stay engaged with family and friends, whether through digital connections or socially distanced encounters. Our love for each other, our appreciation for each other has continued to grow during this unusual year. And that's something for which I am deeply grateful. Another reader named only ES says, my daughter told me that people in nursing homes and assisted living centers were looking for pen pals to help them combat loneliness brought on by the pandemic. I'd always loved to write letters and receive letters, but a handwritten letter has become a rarity. So I jumped on the opportunity to resurrect this pastime of mine. Initially, I sent out three letters to three assisted living facilities in three states. I received one reply from a wonderful man who lives in New Hampshire. So far we've exchanged three letters and I've made a new friend. Wayne Smith of Spartansburg, South Carolina says, because I've been at home 24 seven, I watched a pair of barn swallows raise their young from my front, front porch. Although this but not, must not sound like much, I watched the entire process from the parents selecting a place to build two side-by-side -side intricate mud nests where I could easily see them through my front window to their laying and hatching eggs, feeding the young babies, raising them to maturity and very patiently teaching them to fly on the porch with the aid of the porch light to land on. I then watched them fly around the yard in a larger area every day and return to the nest every night to sleep together for at least the first week. The mother bird and the father bird were amazingly attentive parents. These birds have been a highlight in my year. Now these are just a few samplings of the testimonies, witnessing God's creation, to create and care for life, reaching out to strangers who may be alone and lost and using the, the lost art of letter writing. Developing stronger connections with family members, solidifying our love and caring for each other. Discovering new ways to connect with neighbors and learning we can count on them in this hard time and what a comfort that is. An end to excessive consumption, thereby practicing good stewardship. Making our homes and yards a place of beauty making masks to support first responders. It's my hope that each of you had some testimony like that in 2020. I did. My neighbor, Minnie Cortez, brought me supper at least twice a week. Actually, she's still doing it. Plus baked goods, and she's been doing that since March. Now, I don't necessarily need this help, but I'm grateful, and I've come to know her better. And yes, I know I can count on her and her husband in any emergency. 
So what's the point of these simple testimonies in today's theme of the word is among us? Because Jesus is the word and the word is God. The angel tells us to fear not. Linus of Peanuts cartoon strip drops his blanket and also tells us to fear not. John calls us to look past the birth of Jesus to see what Jesus' birth means for us. The word gives light and life, and the word tells us to receive Jesus and believe in his name, and we are the children of God. No longer bound by circumstances that surround us. Jesus came and was born, lived, died, and was raised again to remind us that God loves us without reservation, without condition. I have no idea if the people who shared their silver linings in the Reader's Digest about the pandemic are Christians or if they practice any kind of religion. I just know that their testimony shows they were not fearful. They appreciated God's great grand creation. They were grateful and they found ways to serve others. To me, it shows the word was among them this past year. In the words of Charlie Brown, I think that when the dust settles, we will realize how little we need, how very much we actually have, and the true value of human connection. So if you haven't packed all your Christmas things away and you have a small nativity scene, I ask you to keep it out all year round to remind us, God sent the son so we might become children of God. God sent his son, so we will fear not. Here are some ways that we can become the word among us for 2021. End a quarrel. Seek out the forgotten friend. Dismiss suspicion and replace it with trust. Write a love letter. Share some treasure. Give a soft answer. Keep a promise. Find the time, forgo a grudge, forgive an enemy. Listen, apologize if you were wrong. Try to understand, examine your demands on others. Think first of someone else. Be kind, be gentle, appreciate, laugh a little, laugh a little more, express gratitude. Gladden the heart of a child. Welcome a stranger. Take pleasure in the beauty and the wonder of earth. Speak your love. Speak it again. Speak it yet once again. Amen. Thank you so much, Carol. There was so much there. As we begin preparations for communion, um, I have some uh, readings to give. Uh, the first one comes from Ephesians 1, verse 3 through 6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. As we have heard in this scripture, we have been blessed. Sometimes we fail to recognize the blessings or to act in ways that acknowledge how much God loves us. As we prepare for communion, take a moment to consider how this new year brings new opportunities to express how God has blessed you. Our next reading comes from Matthew 26. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. 
I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place in with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes that it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Let us prepare by singing our hymn of remembrance, number 515, in these moments we remember. you to the Lord's Supper. All are welcome at Christ's table. The Lord's Supper or communion is a sacrament in which we remember the life, death, resurrection, and continuing presence of Jesus Christ. In community of Christ, we also experience communion as an opportunity to renew our baptismal covenant and to be formed as disciples who, have, who live Christ's mission. Others may have different or added understandings within their own faith traditions. We invite all who participate in the Lord's Supper to do so in the love and peace of Jesus Christ. 
Now, would you please turn to 533, 533 in Community of Christ Sings as we join in this hymn of preparation, I Come With Joy, a Child of God. you to kneel for the blessing of the bread and the wine. Eternal God, we ask you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread and wine to the so souls of all those who receive them that they may eat and drink in remembrance of the body and blood of your Son, and witness unto you, O God, that they are willing to take upon them the name of your Son and always remember him and keep the commandments which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. You may now serve yourselves. Today in our prayers, we remember the people of the occupied Palestinian territories located in the Middle East. These territories include the West Bank and Gaza Strip, Jordan and Egypt, Palestinian territories along the Israel, Jordan, and parts of Lebanon and Syria compromised land that is considered holy by Jews, Christians, and Muslims. Let us pray. God of Shalom, we bring our prayers of peace to you today. You know the prayers of our heart. We ask your blessings on these prayers. 
If they challenge us to compassion, give us compassion. If they inspire us to action, give us courage to act. If they challenge us to growth, give us courage to expand our understanding. In the name of the Prince of Peace, we pray. Amen. During the disciples' generous response, we focus on aligning our heart with God's heart. Our offerings are more than meeting budgets or funding mission. Through our offerings, we are able to tangibly express our gratitude to God, who is the giver of all. I'd like to share a short scripture from Doctrine and Covenants, section 165 2 B. Listen to the testimonies of those responding generously. Follow your soul's yearning to come home to God's grace and generosity. Let gratitude show you the way. As we share our mission tithes, either by sending a check in the mail, giving through our local website, seaofchristsa.org, or through e-tithing, use this time to thank God for the many gifts received in your life. Our hearts grow aligned with God's when we gratefully receive and faithfully respond by living Christ's mission. The first Sunday of each month focuses the disciples' generous response on abolish poverty and suffering, which includes oblation and world hunger ministry. As the congregational financial officer, I know we just had a budget meeting a few weeks ago. Um, I did want to draw your attention to one thing. I have noticed that since the pandemic started, our congregational offerings to abolish poverty and end suffering uh, have been reduced a little bit because we don't have any plate cash coming in every Sunday. And so uh, every first Sunday of the month, any plate cash that we have, we always pass that along to World Church for abolish poverty and then suffering. That's been a little disrupted over the last year. So I thought I would just plant a seed in your minds today that um, if you feel so led, uh, when you are contributing with either a check or e-tithing or through our local website, you might set aside a small portion for abolish poverty and suffering. It doesn't need to be today. It can be any Sunday. You might uh, decide that you want to add it one particular Sunday to your uh, monthly routine of giving. I just thought I'd, I'd plant that in your, in your minds today, since it is the first Sunday of the month. So at this time, if you would please join with me in prayer, I will offer a blessing over our collective tithes and offerings. Heavenly Creator, we have become keenly aware today of the incredible blessings that we have in our lives. Despite the hardship of the pandemic, of physical distancing, we are always blessed, no matter the circumstances, by your love and your presence. And we come today thankful for that love and that presence. 
we wish to acknowledge your love and presence and return to you a portion of what you have given us. Please bless the offerings, the tithes, the oblation, the time, talent, and treasure that we return to you today and throughout the coming week and month and year. We ask your special blessing upon our gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. for today, we receive grace as the word lives among us. Go forth and dare to reach out to others to help reconcile and make new. Our experience today fed and nourished us, and it is now time for us to actively do something to transform today's words into actions. We are disciples called to be involved, to abolish poverty, in suffering, one instance at a time. We have been fed around this table. Now it is our turn to feed others. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the encouraging presence of the Holy Spirit be with you 
this day and every day.